So this is the EMF Network Operations Center. This is where we've been building and staging and then deploying the network from all week. This is where the switches get configured, everything tested, sent out with the Wi-Fi access points, decked base stations. The GSM team come along later and add their GSM base stations as well. This all then goes out to the Darton Clo, the DKs we call them, uh, on site. So let's start where people can, where they get the internet. So we have blanket wired and wireless coverage. Most people prefer wireless because they don't have to run a cable, but it is there. There's a dart and clow within 40 meters of pretty much every tent, unless you've camped in a very strange area. Uh, these dart and clow, it's, uh, it's German for data toilet. And uh, we use them because they're basically portable toilets, portable loos, um, and inside each is a switch. Um, deck base station, we used to keep the access points inside, but now we have them mounted on poles. We find them super convenient because um, they're basically a waterproof box and there is the potential for things to get wet on a campsite. So if we take a wander up here maybe and take a look inside this one. So we put padlocks on the outside just in case, but uh, once you get inside it's pretty hard to confuse them for a working toilet. And there we are, an access switch for those who wish to connect by wired ethernet. It then also connects to our access point uh, deck base station, GSM base station on the roof. We also have a light. So it's a sequence of individually addressable LEDs uh, that change color depending on ARTnet broadcast messages. So apart from looking cool, they're actually a really useful way to see if the network at a glance in that dart and clow is running or not. So uh, one can look across the field and see, ah, oh, the power may be out there, the switch may have a problem, and head over and sort it out. So from here is a complex uh, distribution network of fiber, complex physically, not so complex logically. Each switch in each of these dart and clo is directly connected to our core switch, but that's a lot of fiber to run. So what we actually do is we run a fiber uh, from each one to a kind of hub dart and clo, and we use LC couplers just to patch the fiber onto another fiber with more cores. And I've picked the wrong one. Oh no, I haven't. So this looks like an underground splice closure because it actually is an underground splice closure. Um, this runs underground through ducts all the way back to our NOC DC, our data center on site. Uh, these pop out at a couple of locations on site and we just patch on with couplers to provide a connection to the switch or to, the, to a switch in a nearby DK. If we walk down here, I can show you where they all connect logically back to the NOC DC. So we had two plans for this event. One was our normal plan, which is to run fiber along the ground and along the festoon lighting, which runs through the site. That was our plan B. Our plan A, which we really wanted to do because we like to do something a bit challenging and a bit different every year, was to run fiber through the ducts on the site. And I'm very glad we pulled that off because it's so much neater and so much easier to get where you need to go. A challenge on any field is to cool and protect the servers and the switches that we use to build the network with. Our NOC DC, our NOC data center. This is, this is the solution we've come up with. In 2012, it was a large scouting tent uh, with a, literally a 19 inch rack down one end, but it kept getting covered with bits of field, grass and the like. 2014, uh, we had a, a reefer, a refrigerated shipping container, which was massive and really cold. The problem was it was too cold. You couldn't set the set point high enough and it condensed so much liquid. It was water blowing all over the servers, tarps covering everything. Not really good. So 2016, we decided we'd just rent the same kind of refrigeration unit that the bar used to keep the beer cold, which uh, worked out really well. The, the built-in chiller that comes with it wasn't quite enough because it's designed to keep food cold rather than remove two and a half kilowatts worth of heat. Uh, so we do actually run our own air conditioning inside. So if I can talk you through what we have in here, we have our core switch, which is uh, this arista here. These fibers coming in here are coupled literally onto the un underground fiber that we've run through the site. So that's our core switch core router. Uh, this is access for the devices in the data center and on the roof of the data center. These are our wireless LAN controllers, redundant pair of those. UPSs, very heavy UPSs, automatic transfer switch, 
um, and some servers that run as a, a virtual machine cluster that provide all the services that we provide on site. So DNS, DHCP, um, network monitoring that we use, configuration management, ticketing, that kind of thing. Is all this hired in or is this people, so, is this board, skier, how does this work? So the container and the air conditioner are rented in. But pretty much everything else here is on loan from either a vendor or an organization called Eventinfra, which some of our team set up in the Netherlands to kind of hold donated equipment from vendors and store it, insure it, ship it out to each of these events. So it's really convenient to know long in advance that we don't have to start flagging for equipment from the vendors. So there's pretty much no flat surface on this site, including right here which is why uh, we put a sign saying non-slip mat between every device and it's why we have this little bodge here to make sure that the air conditioner doesn't topple over and crush all the servers and fibers and switches. We have uh, two UPSs, redundant pair, and we have an automatic transfer switch for any servers that can only take one power supply. Um, but as far as I'm aware, we haven't actually lost power at all in this area. These are our underground fibers. One goes off down the site and into those underground closures that are currently in Darton Clay. The other one goes well over a kilometre through other ducts all the way to a green cabinet that we've installed right by the street and that's where our circuit actually terminates. We tried to make it as easy and as pain-free as possible for them to bring the circuit in and it worked out really well in the end. This will stay here and uh, if we return in 2020 we hope to use it again. We hope it'll be in good condition. We've, uh, we've done all we can to protect it. I'm taking you a very long way, all the way back to the main entrance of the entire deer park, right by the main road. A wrap about a raspberry pie. <laughs> that couldn't have been better time. Uh, I came on the Thursday to install the camera up on the hill to do a time-lapse video of the build. And then we started receiving deliveries Friday morning, uh, just before 7am. A week later. It's unrecognizable. <laughs> We're using single mode fiber, which can go 10 kilometers, and this is about 1.2. It's a bit shorter as the crow flies, but we have ducting that we have to follow through. This may look like a dart and clow. It may look like a portable toilet, but is also neither. This is actually part of our uh, emergency response plan. The mobile signal on site is so bad, if the internet connection goes down and we can't get a call out to 999, someone could be sent down to this gate that has a hard line phone inside. I'm very proud of this. This area, all the way up to the toilet up there, or the not toilet up there, we dug this up in the freezing cold in January, installed ducts, installed power underground, we installed other ducts out to the road, literally to the property line here, leaving ducts and ropes for the provider to come and pull their fibre through later. We installed a concrete plinth, and then the following weekend we installed this, a proper street cabinet. So what we have in here is some power that is permanently on, so not fed from our generators, kindly provided by Eastnor Castle. Uh, we have fibre coming in from our provider, which is then patched into their network terminating device. So this is what they use to monitor and manage the circuit in case there's a problem. Uh, this is the little device we were using for testing. This is how we were able to see a month ago that the circuit was done and that we could get a full gigabit. It was so reassuring to know that this was going to be ready when we finally got on site. But what actually happens now is this fiber, the access port fiber, goes into this coupler and directly onto the same fibre we just saw up at the NOC DC. And we also have a UPS down here just in case something happens with the power supply. It gives us a bit of warning because we actually have that still connected via a different fibre, so we know that if that goes down, but this still has power, then we've lost power and it's just running on the UPS, so we've got about 10 minutes to get down here with a generator to make sure the uplink stays. 2012, we ran wireless point-to-point. -point. 2013 EM Wave, we ran wireless point-to-point. -point. Shorter distance in Docklands, but still point-to-point. -point. 2014, another wireless point-to-point. -point. 2016, we were so lucky uh, to find the, the internet provider of the, the nearby business park and make friends with them, and they were so helpful. But this is ours. We built this, this will stay here, and hopefully we'll be back in 2020 to use it again. I think from a network standpoint, there are a lot more ducts on site and a lot more manholes that we've only discovered while we've been doing this build up. So there's a lot more options to put more fiber in to make it easier to set up 
next time and in the future, so it'd be great to get some in there. Through a bone apps, miss at a time. If anyone can figure that out. Once you get inside, it's pretty hard to confuse them for a working toilet. To get from this year's badge.